Hi everyone, following up on my previous rig, um, I have numerous requests for some more templates or prototypes. Uh, I will be giving these away free, so please check out the Dropbox link at the bottom of the um, page. Uh, this is following on from this pack here, which was um, my first version of creating a real-time projection mapping solution for Cinema 4D. Now there are professional solutions out there, uh, for example Hypnotizer, Green Hippo, uh, you can now import 3D meshes for visualizations, and I think you can also use it for mapping purposes as well. Um, D3 Technologies. Uh, also has the solution, uh, if I can find it, there we go. In fact, I think D3 is further ahead in this particular field at the moment, but I think Hippotizer is meant to be catching them up. Um, unfortunately, these solutions are very expensive. Uh, you'd be looking at about $1,200 per year just to lease the software for this one. Uh, more if you want to buy the media servers. And Green Hippo is, again, quite expensive. So if you're just a one-person band or creative or a small team and using things like Mad Mapper, or um, what else is that? There's, I can never pronounce this one correctly. I think it's Milam. Yeah, that's the one. So these are projection mapping software solutions uh, that's run off your laptop. And although they are getting better, for example, there is a pipeline in this particular software where you can take 3D mesh from Cinema 4D, put it into After Effects using something like 3D Elements, and then real-time changes in After Effects can be projected in real-time uh, via your projector. So that is very cool, but um, it does require decent graphics cards, and it's a bit labor-intensive, and because it's real-time, rather than truly exported through the uh, preview, it's uh, probably isn't very safe. Well, MadMapper, you can currently put a 3D mesh into MadMapper, but I think you can only really um, use it for animating the 3D objects rather than using that as a projection UVW map or sort of projection area. So between the pro technology and the sort of uh, the, the smaller sort of uh, uh, software solutions, there isn't really a happy medium as yet. So this is why I have made these. So this is the first one I've shown many of you before in a previous Vimeo link. Um, if you want to find out more about it, um, the it's called 3D Cinema 4D Projection Mapping Rig, and um, yeah, check it out. So um, I won't bother going through this one again. I'm just going to quickly review the options I've created. So this one here is for doing projection mapping on cars or objects. Uh, similar to my other version, there are two models in here. These seem to be identical. So all you have to do is drop the model into here. Um, Use PRSR to center it, if you want, um, or whatever you do to that one, make sure you use the same coordinates. So in this case, I've rotated it minus 45 degrees, and this one here is also minus 45 degrees. And whatever 3D animation you cook up in this area, for example, I've got some 3D cubes there, and the next one, they should be projected onto the car. Of course, the other thing to consider with uh, projection mapping is uh, if you're doing one projector, that's pretty easy. But if you're doing two, then you can obviously need to put the projectors in to capture the perspective from that particular point of view. So it'll look very screwy from the projector. But from the audience's point of view, sweet spot, it should be pretty cool. So that's the car one. Let's see what else we got. Um, I've got some friends in America who, uh, who asked me for this one. They do a lot of projection mapping for sports events onto the, um, whether it's ice rinks or basketball courts. Um, and quite often what they want to do is have a camera crane. Um, so really it's not so much about the audience, it's about the camera crane, live view, view to screen. Um, so this one, whatever you do to the first crane, which is here, will then be replicated. Sorry, I should be playing with my music data. So whatever happens to the first one up here will also happen to the second one. Of course, the changes are quite subtle. Uh, 
And again, depending on how many projections you're going to have um, at the location, it's up to you to um, position your projectors. Um, for example, I've got one here, which is just set up for capturing the whole screen altogether. I just put a placeholder texture in for now. Or for example, if you had, uh, let's say, oh, wrong one, two projections on either side and you're doing a blend, and I've got it set up for each of these four projectors. And you simply need to render out. Again, it'll look very screwy from the projector's point of view, but you're always basing on the assumption that there is one ideal um, point for projection, uh, sorry, point for perspective rather. It should be this one here. There you go, and that looks all right. Next one, um, one I was what I wasn't expecting to get is a cave or a virtual reality booth. Now I'm not sure quite how um, people are going to use this one, but basically uh, you move this around. Let's get a little bit closer. So if you wanted to, you could turn that rig on to see what's going on. Load it set by four by three. But yeah, basically if you move this around, then way down here in the virtual cave model, which is basically just a six-sided projection with a door in it. So it'll be floor projection, wall, ceiling, and all sides. Uh, in this one here, it's called uh, point of view. So even while the top one's animating, in fact, I shall show you. And hopefully it won't kill my computer. Set up a keyframe there, and let's set up another one a bit closer to the tree. Now let's go to this one. Hit play, should have done that, but you can still look around. So actually you're inside the cave at the moment, there's the door, and in real time the content's been changed from the, uh, I suppose the virtual tour rig up above. So I think that's all, oh sorry, one more. Uh, this one's just very similar to the original one, but it's designed for projection onto buildings. So a similar sort of thing, you need to make sure your building model is in both the mapping object version and the remap version. Of course, you don't need to put the whole model of the building, just the area you're projecting onto, which is why I've deleted all the polygons at the back. And there, it's all working. So I hope you find this useful. Otherwise, um, have fun. Thank you. Goodbye.